Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome. Thanks for joining together this morning, uh, no matter where you are. Uh, those who are new to the parish or from uh, other communities or out of town know that you're welcome and you honor us by your presence. There is a piece of dialogue in the J.R. Tolkien's book, The Fellowship of the Ring, that can lead us into today's gospel. Frodo says, I wish it need not have happened in my time. So do I, says Gandalf, and so do all who live to see such times, but that is not for them to decide. All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given us. Our gospel passage raises the issue of time for Jesus and for us. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Jesus doesn't back away from his appointed time. He approaches it with courage and determination, even knowing the challenges that will face him. As much as we want this time of pandemic with all its burdens and suffering to come to an end, this is the hour in which we find ourselves, the time given to us. God's grace will help us to carry our crosses, knowing that we are not alone. We follow Jesus, the one who has gone before us and who shows us the way. Thanks to the Irving Farrell family for being our public voice of prayer responses. All of you in your domestic church join in the prayer and music of our worship. We'll begin with a few moments of silent meditation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and love of Jesus Christ, who calls us to conversion, be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. Like the seed of grain planted in the earth, we must die to self and live for Christ and for one another. As our Lenten journey of enlightenment and purification continues, let us pray for deliverance. Let us seek forgiveness for our personal sins and the sins of our world.
I confess confess to Almighty God God, and to to you, my my brothers brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. In our hearts, O God, you have written a covenant of grace, sealed by the obedience of Jesus, your Son. Raise us up with Christ, the grain fallen to earth that yields a harvest of everlasting life. Bring us to glorify your name by following faithfully where he has led. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, our deliverance and our hope who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. In a time of deep despair, Judah, exiled from its homeland, despaired of its special calling by God. The prophet Jeremiah realized that God's faithfulness was going to be revealed in a new and different covenant at a deeper level than they could ever have imagined. I asked Mary Kuhn to deliver our first scripture. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers, the day I took them by the hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt, for they broke my covenant. And I had to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer will they have to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. All from the greatest, least to the greatest, shall know me, says the Lord. For I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks. Be to God. Create in me, create in me, a clean heart, O oh God. Create in me, create in me, a clean heart, O oh God. A pure heart create for me, O oh God. Put a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, nor deprive me of your Holy Spirit. Create in me, create in me, a clean heart, O God. Give me again the joy of your help, with a spirit of fervor sustain me, that I may teach transgressors your ways, and sinners may return to you. Create in me, create in me, a clean heart, O God. For in sacrifice you take no delight, burnt offering from me you would refuse. My sacrifice, a contrite spirit, a humble contrite heart you will not spurn. Create in me, create in me, a clean heart, O God. Amen. 
in our second reading, we are told that Jesus prayed with loud cries and tears. So if you poured out your heart to God in a prayer of tears, you're in good, good company with Jesus who did the same. As God heard the prayer of Jesus in difficult times, God will hear your prayers as well. I ask Tim Kostolansky to deliver our second scripture. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In the days when Christ Jesus was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Praise and honor, honor and glory, glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise and honor, honor and glory, glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant will be. Praise and honor, honor and glory, glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, the Lord is with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the good news according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Some Greeks who had come to worship at the Feast of Passover came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you. Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Anyone who holds on to life just as it is destroys that life. But if you let it go, reckless in your love, you'll have it forever, real and eternal. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I'm troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd there heard the voice and said it was thunder. But others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, this voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. Jesus said this indicating the kind of death he would die for our salvation, the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Take, oh, take me as I am. Some man of what I should be. Set your seal upon my heart and live in me. Take, oh, take me as I am. Summon out what I should be. Set your seal upon my heart and live in me. O 
What beautiful words open our scripture passage from John's gospel. That request, sir, we would like to see Jesus. The Eucharist is one of our ways of seeing Jesus. As I hold up the bread before communion, I say, look, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. In the scriptures that are proclaimed at Mass, we see Jesus, we encounter him. All of those sacramental moments are encounters with Jesus, and we know most of all we see him in one another when we look closely enough. Well, if those sacramental moments are encounters with Jesus, then in the last couple of weeks I've seen Jesus about 140 times uh, because I had 140 celebrations of the Sacrament of Reconciliation with our second graders preparing for First Eucharist and our fourth and fifth graders whom we missed because of last year's uh, COVID that prevented us from sharing that sacrament with them. If I look like I have battle fatigue, um, I do uh, this weekend. One of the inspiring things about sharing that sacrament with so many of our young children, though, was almost every one of them had memorized the act of contrition. In the first reading, we hear the prophets say, God will write his law on our hearts. And those children learn the act of contrition by heart. That doesn't mean rote learning or memorization. It means by heart. They took it into themselves. And I could feel it as they prayed, my God, I am sorry for my sins with all my heart in choosing to do wrong and failing to do good. I have sinned against you whom I should love above all things. I firmly intend with your help to do penance, to sin no more, and to avoid whatever leads me to sin. Our Savior Jesus Christ suffered and died for us. In his name, my God, have mercy. I wonder how many of us as adults have that prayer committed by heart as part of our own personal prayer life. It's one of the struggles that I have when we prepare our eight-year-olds and 10-year-olds for the Sacrament of Reconciliation, a sacrament that the majority of us adult Catholics rarely, if ever, share in. Every year, the bishop sends out his instructions to pastors and parishes for the Lenten season. And this year again, it said, Lent is also a time to emphasize the sacrament of penance. Parishes should be encouraged to offer the faithful various opportunities to celebrate the sacrament. All priests are urged to ensure that every Catholic has the opportunity to celebrate the sacrament during Lent. I'm not sure if the good bishop recognizes that our roster of parishioners is over 1,500 families and that there wouldn't be enough time between now and Christmas to ensure that every member of the parish could share in that sacrament. Besides, we could ask the question, who needs confession? Heck, we've got Oprah Winfrey to bear our souls to, and Twitter and Facebook, where we can get it all out and lay it all out for the world to hear and see. But we still need the grace of reconciliation. As we draw closer to Easter, we hear that word, the words of Psalm 51, create a clean heart in me, O God. And in light of the news of yet more animosity, hatred, violence, and death among ethnic communities in our country, now with the Asians who were killed, isn't reconciliation the missing ingredient for the healing of our hearts and our nation and our world? We do need reconciliation. 
Earlier this Lent, I shared with a couple different groups in the parish uh, something that I wanted to uh, share with all of us today as kind of an examination as we prepare uh, for Easter. Many adults balk at the sacrament because I've heard people say, well, I, I just wouldn't know what to confess. I wouldn't know what to say. Well, let me share a PowerPoint uh, with you that might help answer that question through the words of Pope Francis. Can you give me a thumbs up, Christoph, if you see it? Okay, thank you. About uh, seven years ago, Pope Francis at his annual Christmas gathering with the Cardinals uh, at the Curia, all of those head honchos in Rome, uh, gave them their Christmas present in a, pre in a uh, presentation that he made. Um, I don't think they were expecting what he gave to them because he gave them an examination of conscience. He gave them what he called 15 spiritual ailments that he had encountered in the leadership he called them illnesses or temptations that weaken our service to the Lord. Well, I took 10 of them and uh, put them together for myself for an examination of conscience, and I've shared it with others. They are as relevant to us as they were to any of those cardinals. The first one is the ailment of feeling immortal or essential. Those who turn into masters and feel superior to everyone rather than in the service of others. It's often called the Messiah complex, an exaggeration of my own importance. Whereas the Lord calls us to humility. the ailment of excessive activity. Those who, like Martha in the gospel, and the gospel lose themselves in their work, inevitably neglecting what is better, sitting at Jesus' feet. Even Jesus called his disciples to rest a little because neglecting necessary rest brings anxiety and stress. The ailment of overplanning. This is for all of us who have our uh, Google calendars in hand every waking minute of the day. Good planning is necessary, but without fa falling into the temptation of wanting to block or steer the freedom of the Holy Spirit. Life without spontaneity is a prison. The ailment of rivalry and vainglory. When outward appearance and personal success become the primary objectives of life, we can lose our authenticity and become very superficial. The Lord isn't concerned with the outside. God looks into the heart of each person. Oh, the ailment of gossip and chatter. Talking about others in a negative way can ruin the reputation of colleagues, family members, co-workers, fellow students. It's the ailment of cowards who don't have the courage to speak up front. And so they talk behind someone's back. The ailment of indifference to others. When we think only of ourselves, we lose the truthfulness and warmth of human relationships. There are so many ways we can help people around us, even just a kind word or listening ear. Like those leaders in the gospel story who walked right past the man beaten on the road to Jericho, we fail to be like the Good Samaritan 
who went out of his way to help. I love this one. The ailment of the funereal face or the funeral face. It's the ailment of people who are scowling and unfriendly and think that in order to be serious, they have to show a strict face and treat others, especially those whom they think are inferior, with rigidity, harshness, and arrogance. In reality, Pope Francis says, people like that are usually fearful and insecure about themselves. The followers of Jesus strive to be polite, serene, enthusiastic, and joyful. A healthy dose of humor can benefit everyone. Pope Francis shows how true that is in his own life. The ailment of worldly profit. To relentlessly seek to increase our power or personal profit can lead us to defame, slander, and discredit others. We see it every day in newspapers and magazines and partisan politics in corporate greed. It isn't only on a grand or public scale that this happens, however. It can happen in competition among students in a classroom, at work with colleagues in the boardroom, even among brothers and sisters. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and God's justice and all these other things will be given you besides. The ailment of closed circles. When belonging to a clique becomes more important than belonging to the greater community and in some situations than belonging to Christ himself, we cut ourselves off from others or put ourselves above others. It can foster discrimination and bigotry, which we've seen so much of in our country. There's so much to be gained by interacting with all sorts of people. The world and the people in it is a garden with all kinds of beautiful flowers. God wants us to enjoy them all. And lastly, the ailment of hoarding. When the followers of Jesus seek to fill an existential void in our heart by hoarding material possessions, not because of necessity, but only to feel secure, we lose our balance and perspective. We spend precious time and energy on material possessions and less time on matters of faith and love. Jesus urged his disciples to travel lightly so they could be free to proclaim the kingdom and announce God's good news. So I think we can hear from Pope Francis in his admonition to the cardinals something that we can all relate to, an examination of conscience that could help us to look more closely and clearly at our own situation in life. As I said, I don't anticipate a rush to the confessional, especially during the time of COVID. And that makes me think that reconciliation, which is so essential to our Catholic Christian faith, has, is coming to us in many, many different ways. And I really believe that the most significant sacramental encounter of reconciliation comes at every Eucharist. If you take a look at the Eucharist, our Mass, and what happens with our prayer at Mass, the words we say, the sentiments that are aroused within us, we begin every liturgy begging for God's mercy, Kyrie eleison, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, or as during Lent, praying the confidior, a very direct and bold confession. I confess to Almighty God that I have mightily sinned in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. And the priest says, may Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you your sins. Even when we praise God with the words of the Gloria, 
Within the Gloria, we address God as you who take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. And how often the scripture readings, at least one of them, if not at times all three of them, speak of forgiveness, of mercy, of reconciliation. At the altar, the presider prays the Eucharistic prayer. It is the quintessential prayer of reconciliation and forgiveness. As the communion cup is held up, the words of Jesus, take this all of you and drink. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant poured out for you and for all. Why? For the forgiveness of sins. The Lord's prayer, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And then the presider says, deliver us Lord from every evil and grant peace in our day. And then we share a sign of peace that unites us with family and friends and stranger alike. And the prayer that is said, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And then at the breaking of the bread, we sing, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. And not just once, but we repeat it three times. And then almost as if God hasn't quite heard us, we pray right before we receive communion. Behold the Lamb of God. This is the one who takes away the sin of the world, the one you're going to receive right now in this Holy Eucharist. And we say once again before the Lord, I'm not worthy. Say the word and my soul shall be healed. I don't want to belabor the point but I think it can be easily made that the Eucharist is our primary source of reconciliation and how eager we all are to be able sooner than later to be able to share once again in that act of reconciliation and sacrifice. Next week, we enter into Holy Week Palm Sunday begins next Sunday. Uh, perhaps this reflection on reconciliation, these ailments that affect all human beings might help us to do what Psalm 51 said, create in us a clean heart, O God. At this point, I would like to offer the prayer of scrutinies for the members of our community who are approaching ever more closely the Easter sacraments. I recognize Adam Massey preparing for the Easter sacraments of baptism, confirmation, and Eucharist, and Angela Warren and Jessica Harrow seeking reception into the church. Let us pray for these friends whom the church has confidently chosen. May they successfully complete their preparation and at the Paschal Feast find Christ in his sacraments. I ask Adam and Jessica and Angela to bow your heads in prayer. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, when your people wandered far from your friendship, you did not abandon them, but promised everlasting covenant. Look with mercy on all who approach the Easter sacraments. They long to receive your covenant and your saving love. Never let the power of evil rule their lives, but write your law upon their hearts. Give them the courage to live by your word alone. Keep them from all harm and bring them to the joys of the resurrection. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite the assembly to extend your hands and blessing with me over our friends and the elect. Lord Jesus, like the grain of wheat that falls to the earth and dies, you willingly accepted death. Free these chosen ones as they approach Easter from all attachments which keep them from seeking first the kingdom of God. 
When they share your sacraments at Easter, bring them your abundant life that will last forever. For you are Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Dear elect and candidates, I commend you to reflect more deeply throughout the week on the gospel and scriptures that we heard. And I look forward to joining with you again on Palm Sunday and the beginning of Holy Week. I invite now Barbara Price and Joe Kerner to lead our petitions. That all people of God, from the least to the greatest, may know the Lord through the law of love written in their hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let me try that again. That throughout the world, those entering the church this Easter may be seen as a gift from God, stirring up within us the desire to live without compromise, the vows of our baptism. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the people of nations throughout the world may see an end to the pandemic and the resolution of conflict through peaceful means. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That this assembly of St. Perpetua may hear in our lives a harvest of hope and joy and extend the fruits of our faith to others, especially in our prayers for the sick, Gloria Diaz and Frank Perry. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. That the spirit of God may reconcile the poor with the rich, the powerful with the lowly, the indifferent with the oppressed. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. That our beloved dead might take their place with the angels and saints in the kingdom of light and peace, especially Daniel Thomas Gilmore. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. In silence, let us bring our personal needs and intentions to God. Merciful God, through all the trials of this life, bring us to deeper, more intimate share in Christ's redeeming passion. May we produce the abundant fruit of the seed that falls to the earth and dies. May we be gathered as your harvest for the kingdom where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We pray the prayer of reconciliation that Jesus entrusted to us. Our Father, who art, who art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive those who trespass, trespass against, against us. And, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. spirit. I invite those of you at home with your family to share that peace of Christ as we worshiping alone, but in spirit with you extended to each one of you. with the seekers in the gospel who ask, Lord, may we see you. Let us join in our prayer of spiritual communion. 
knowing that the Lord is always in our hearts. Lord Jesus, you are with us always, especially when we gather in your name to hear your word in scripture and be fed by your sacred body and blood. When we cannot physically come to the Eucharistic table, be with us still. May your real presence fill our hearts and send us with love to care for the earth and all our brothers and sisters. Amen. Almighty God, we ask to be numbered always among the members of Christ, whose saving word brings us life. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thanks to everyone for joining in prayer with us this morning, and thanks to our prayer leaders, readers, and musicians. I'll share communion outside the front of the church at 1230 for those who wish to receive. Um, this Wednesday is our final Lenten uh, renewal town hall gathering at seven o'clock. Um, after this Wednesday, we won't meet again on Wednesdays until uh, the week after Easter. The Stations of the Cross are prayed on Friday at seven o'clock and all the previous uh, stations that were beautifully offered by different ministries in the parish are on our parish website for you to uh, use in your personal prayer at any time. Next Sunday is Palm Sunday and the beginning of Holy Week. Registered members of the parish should have received in the mail an Easter letter that has the uh, script, the outline and schedule for Holy Week and the Triduum. Um, next Saturday evening at five o'clock, as well as Sunday at 1130, we'll celebrate the Palm Sunday Eucharist in the church. Uh, the numbers are limited, so you have to go online to register uh, for that. And then on 9 at 9.30 in the morning on Sunday, we will have our uh, regular Zoom uh, service. There will be a distribution of, and blessing of the palm branches. The rest of the schedule, I invite you again to uh, find that on our parish website. This afternoon, at, uh, right after this uh, service, uh, we'll be collecting food for St. Vincent de Paul Food Pantry uh, that you can drop off in front of the community center. Thanks to those who have volunteered to help with the winter night shelter. If you'd like to make a financial contribution for the success, success of that program, you can do so on our parish website. We'll close with the hymn, Unless a Grain of Wheat Falls to the Ground and Dies.
Lord, you care for your people even when they stray. Grant us a complete change of heart so that we may follow you with greater fidelity. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.